Well, today we got a new radio on the bench. It's another uh, <clears throat> Montgomery Ward's airline. It's a, I believe it's a Bakelite case. It's an AM radio receiver only, not a dual band. Um, the case is in very good shape. It's got a, you know, just dirty. Just needs to be cleaned off. Might need a good, you know, little waxing or something, but it looks like it's in fairly good shape. It appears to be Bakelite to me, the way the the coloring is on it. Um, <clears throat> here's the back of the radio. Looks like somebody's done some work to it. Yeah. A little warpage going on here. It's the antenna. There's the antenna. It's a head of coil antenna on it. It looks pretty good. Original wax capacitor on it and an adjustable uh, capacitor. Somebody's marked it. A, well, A, B, and C. I don't know if that's coming through very well, but uh, somebody wrote in there with the, it looks like Sharpie or a permanent marker of some sort. And they are marked here. A, B, or C and B, and apparently they marked it A here. I don't know if that's coming through or not. Um, the cord looks okay. I like this connector. This is really sweet looking, almost like the ones that I have. But this looks original. Does that say Eagle on it? It says Eagle. I wonder if that's Eagle hardware. Hard for me to read that. Something written on there. Looks like the. What does it say? I have to get a magnifier. Genuine Bakelite. It has a catalog number, has a catalog number, and then it says Genuine Bakelite. So this is an original connector. I'm not sure. Maybe it got replaced sometime. I'm not sure. So what model is this? There's the model number right there. 75WG1510A. 32 by 365. I wonder what that means. 32 by 365. I wonder what that means. Huh. Is that the size of this plate? No. No. Huh. Kind of weird, huh? I guess we'll get the screws out of it and take a look at the chassis. Um, I want to. I. I think somebody's probably been in this and worked on it. I'm. I'm willing to bet on it that somebody's been in this. The person I got it from said it did not work, and they never plugged it in. They never. They just looked at them on the shelf again. Another person who liked the look of the radio, but did not want to um, listen to them. So. Uh, We'll get it out and take a look at it. I already see it looks like there's holes in the speaker possibly. We'll have to get it out and take a look at it. When I get it out, I'll get back. Well, probably. Just show you that um, the original clips here are still in it. Up top here for the back. And the bottom of the radio looks like there's four screws. There's four screws that hold it in. And then obviously the knobs and the whole thing will pull out. It looks like the speaker's attached to the chassis. All American 6 or 5. We'll take a look at it here in a second. <clears throat> well, it is an All American 5. It looks like no transformer. 
the speaker does have some damage there's it's torn pretty good right here and here it looks like torn all the way across there that's going to be something to replace um, it looks like it's a permanent magnet um, speaker so I might be able to just replace the speaker if I can find one the right size it looks like there's just a permanent magnet there's only one wire going up here so it looks like a permanent magnet oh look at that there's something stuck in there <laughs> there's a clip for something that holds something in place I bet you that has got something to do with the case that looks like uh, that looks like that slides down over a, a piece of plastic kind of holds something in we'll have to look at the case here um, I wanted to kind of get through looking at this um, the dial the dial cord looks like it's in good shape uh, maybe even like it had been replaced like I said somebody is somebody has worked on this um, but they didn't do a very good job in my opinion I've you know like I said before I'm not a dial cord guy but that don't look right to me <laughs> That don't look right to me. I, I think I just changed the spring. Probably be good. I may even have a spring here that I got for that other, uh, <clears throat> for that uh, Indian head radio might be able to make one of those work for this. I'll take, tip it up and take a look at the, oh, somebody's written on the tubes as to what they are. And they've written on the chassis too, where, where they go on a couple of them. So... They look like mostly metal tubes, except for these guys. Our 35Z5 is our transformer, and our 35L6, which I think is our output. Our output. I'll have to pull up a schematic for this. Looks like they had this off and rode on the back. They've had this off. I wonder why they would have taken that off. Let's look at the bottom side. I have not looked at the bottom side of this yet. Um... looks like the lights just laying in there not in the right place for some reason huh why is that not this is not looking right to me somebody was working on this and they may have given up because that looks like where that light goes and it's gonna shine through that almost like wax paper brown wax paper of some sort and there's marks on it for alignment yep there's three marks on it so far that I've seen that I could see I'm sure those are for the alignment I like that uh, can we lean this all the way back sorry about my hand being in the way oh yeah somebody's been in here I'm gonna have to put something under that maybe use a roll of solder there we go Oh boy, <laughs> we'll get a better look at this. We'll slide this back so it's in the light a little better for you. And then we'll kind of come on in on that a little bit. Yeah, somebody's definitely been in here. I should have been paying closer attention. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh boy. <laughs> oh my god. This is not what to do. I'm not sure if you can see this very well, but man, they just, just like not even connected. Look at that, just laying in there. <laughs> and look at this one. One, two, have been cut off of there, and then they just tie them on here. Why, are, why is there two missing and only one been replaced on here? This is a mess over here too. Look, this is just a mess. Another, another end hanging out. This too, this is a mess. It's just laid on there, it's not even stuck through. At least this one stuck through. 
the terminal and this is just a joke isn't it so we've got one two three electrolytics in here and here's another one not connected to anything going to ground <coughs> pardon me yeah this is a mess this is a mess I would imagine that was connected there at some point huh we're gonna have to get a schematic and take a look and see um, I might tack that on there and we'll see what the radio does once I bet you this thing's gonna make a bunch of noise it this cannot be right none of this can be right I mean look at how this is connected here just wrapped around that I don't that almost looks I don't know factory I, I'm not sure that connection there is that's something else but this black tape this looks like old-school tape here to me this too this looks like this has been in here for a long time this old uh, the old uh, cloth electrical tape I think they they used to use but the black electrical tape over the top of it whoa what a joke and this this looks like it has been replaced the output transformer to the speaker looks like it's been replaced the connections down here and it says 3.2 ohm so I'll have to get a schematic and we'll take a look I'll tack this back into place and then we'll plug it in bring it up slow on the variac and the isolation transformer through the dim bulb tester when I get set up for that we'll uh, I'll get this tacked on here I'll just tack it on here make it so we can pull it off real easy too if it if it's making noise because that is going to the speaker and that is that's the 12 sh7 12 sh7 I'll have to look at the schematic I, I would have thought that 50 would have been our output but it does make sense that this is the intermediate stage so that the volume would go to that tube output rectifier our power cords coming in rectifier the other egg of the power cord is going to the back of the switch to position on the switch but going right from the switch to the volume pot that doesn't seem right to me but it looks original that doesn't look like somebody's added that on we'll have to look at this real hard if this is connected directly and I'm not seeing a no electrolytic right here how are these connected right to the tube uh, we'll get the schematic and take a look We'll be back in a minute. Well, I hooked the antenna back up with uh, jumper leads. <clears throat> I've got the dim bulb tester, isolation transformer, and the variac ready to roll. We're going to turn this on. Okay, so that's on. Put about a quarter of volume. Turn the variac down. I have not powered this radio up before, so I have no idea what's going to happen here. You've seen the bottom of it. Somebody's cobbled it together pretty hard. So we'll go ahead and bring her on up to 60. Point one three amps. Only 7.3 watts though. The bulb is glowing. So something's wired, right? Well, let's go ahead and take it up some more. It's dead silent. Not making a noise at all. Oh, there we go. Oh! I can control it with the volume though. Huh. I wonder how we're going to troubleshoot that. <laughs> it's not drawn over power. It's not it's not drawn overly powered. 
Let's flip it over to two bulbs, see what happens here. That's no good, huh? No good. Well, starts looking at voltages, huh? Take a look at the schematic and see. The tubes are all working. Huh. Huh. Could that be a clue? Could that be a clue? Hmm. I'm sure wiggling them is not going to fix this, but you never know. You always give it a whirl. Could the antennas be hooked up backwards to cause this? I doubt it. Let's just disconnect them. I doubt it's going to make a difference. No. No. No difference. So I wonder if... Start looking at some voltages, huh? On the bottom side here print some schematics and uh, we'll take a look be right back well we're back we have the voltmeter hooked up I found a schematic it has voltages for the pin numbers on all of the vacuum tubes <coughs> pardon me so we're gonna go through this real quick we'll turn the power back on I doubt it healed itself. It's gonna let it warm up here a little bit. Yep, same crapola. Something's hooked up wrong, isn't it? What do we have? So this is our um, power coming in off of the. This should be the output of the this is the electrolytic should be that says 47 and the schematics calling for 50s but that's okay 47 is all right um that should be on the output of pin 8 of the 35z5 so we'll turn this on dc voltage see where we're at here 108 volts and that's pin 8 of the 35Z5. Pin 8. It says 115. We're at 108. Oh, can you read that? 108. Should be 115. We're a little bit low. But somebody's been monkeying around in here. So I wonder what we see for AC here. 3 volts AC. That doesn't seem right. I think that should be less than a volt of AC. Um, I don't think that electrolytic's bad though. It looks like it's newer to me. So I guess it could be. But I wouldn't... 3 volts AC would cause this? I wonder what we have for AC. Here. Ooh. That causes it to hum right off the bat as soon as I touch it. That doesn't make sense, does it? What if we use the... Now that should be the B negative, correct? Chassis denotes B negative. Yeah, the B negative is coming off of that switch, so... Does it do the same thing? Same thing. And 0.73 volts. So what do we have for DC there? I don't like how it's making noise. 0.8, negative 
negative 0.8. I don't know if I want to have you guys, I, I, I know it takes a lot of time to do this, so maybe I'll go through and check voltages. Maybe I'm getting off on a tangent. I should probably stick to the chart, but oh, where's that volume control? Okay, 500k volume control goes to the B negative. The center tap should have And what pin is that? That's the 12SK8. Wait, that's the wrong tube. 12SH7. Whoa, there, there we might have found the problem. It might have the wrong tube in it. Let's figure out what tube it's supposed to be in there. Let me look at another schematic. There's got to be one here that shows us the layout. No, that's the cover schematic part one. There we go. Uh, that's going to be... Number four. Tubes, tubes, number four. That should be an SJ7, 12 SJ7. Number four, yeah, that's number four. That should be an SJ7, 12 SJ7. AF amp. RF amp is the 12 SK7. The converter is the 12 SA7. The IF amp detector in AVC is the 12 SF7. And the AF and the power output is the 35L6GT. So if they have the wrong tube in this, I'm gonna look to see if there's if it converts and then I'm gonna dig through and see if I can if I have a 12 uh, SJ7. 12 SJ7. I'll see if I have one and we'll try it. That would be pretty funny if it's just the wrong tube in the machine and I didn't catch it right off before I plugged it in. That's a mistake on my part. Alright, we'll be back. Well, I looked at the Sylvania substitution chart and for the 12 SJ7GT, which I think the difference is glass tube and one is the metal tube. Um, it says that a 12 SH7G will work, so I'm assuming an S and S, sorry, S an SH SH7G will work where an SJ7GT should have been. So I think the the G stands for glass. I think it's glass tube, and then if they don't have the G, I think they're the metal tube. <clears throat> so it looks like the SH7 is the is the substitute so that's probably not our problem I don't have an SJ7 so we're gonna have to move on without it well I think I figured out what the problem is with this radio <clears throat> pardon me the where's my pointer when I don't have things in my hand this capacitor right here it was staring me in the face the whole time I'm over here looking at all of this other crap that's cobbled together and I totally when I was checking voltages in this problem I totally forgot about this not being hooked up oh not too smart but I found a uh, photo fact of the radio and I guess it would be this way, the way I have it on the bench. Right? This is the way it's sitting on the bench. There's that capacitor. So that's showing number 9. If I turn this over, that's number 9. So I was looking at the schematic. 
I found the you know I was looking at the schematic first and this right here I thought this might be the problem it didn't even occur to me that that was this capacitor <coughs> pardon me uh, coupling the um, B minus to the chassis so yeah without this capacitor being hooked up you can have the AC noise running right across that resistor onto the chassis right and the antenna this tube number one is to the chassis this one's to the chassis this one's to the chassis so that noise could work its way in at each stage oh, sorry that noise could work this is to chassis this is to chassis this is to chassis and that noise could work its way into each one of these stages if this capacitor is missing you can have that noise running right across that resistor to the chassis now I have looked at some of these resistors this one this power resistor right here is out of spec it's at 2k it's supposed to be 15 1.5k and this one's at 2k um, a couple of the resistors are out of spec some but the radio works when I hook that up so um, right I, I seen this number nine on here and I was like how do I figure out where that is and I wasn't even thinking about that one not being hooked up until I found the photo fact and found number nine on the on the photo fact number nine and it's supposed to go right number nine is supposed to go from the B minus so I'm looking at this there's two B minuses here right because this one let's see pin six is connected to the B minus no it's not what was I thinking sorry is this one this is where I have it hooked right here I don't know why I was thinking number six number six to the, that's the B plus want to go to the B minus anyway um, right here is where I, I hook it up <coughs> right here is where I'm hooking it up um, I checked it with my capacitance checker and it says it's 0.5 something um, I was thinking about taking it off and putting it up on the using the um, signal tracer you know the plate voltage or the B plus on the signal tracer to check that capacitor but I think I'm just I this I think this needs to be a um, a safety capacitor you know it's coupling the the B plus to the chassis I think I don't want it to short to ground ever so this sh I want a safety capacitor here so if it fails it'll fail open right and it'll just make that noise big deal nobody's gonna get nothing's gonna get fried right if that happens so let's hook this up real quick this will go here with this well let's turn it on first let's hear the noise again without it being hitched up remember it was making all kinds of noise and watch it not do it Right? Making all kinds of noise. Let's turn it off. Let's hook this up to here. There, let's make sure that's not shorted out anywhere. Let's turn that back on. Pretty cool. So I want to clean all of this crap up. I want to clean all of this up and uh, I'll do that later and fix that. You know, there's a few things we need to do, but I mean, I'm going to spend hours in here cleaning this crap up for sure. Hours in here cleaning this up. Um, this is a mess. Some of these are just horrible connections, bad solder jobs all the way around on a lot of it. Um, 
I would like to put these at 50s, but if I don't, I don't think I have 50s. So I think I'll leave them, I think I might leave them at point at four sevens. I don't know if that's going to be a problem, but I will double check all of the, the sizes. I don't know if this is supposed to be a 20 or a, or a 10. No, it's supposed to be a 20. That's this capacitor right here. That's this electrolytic right here. So it's supposed to be a 20. So it seems like everything's working okay. I mean, they cobbled it together, but it works. So I'm I'm just going to clean it up real well um, and change the resistors that need to be changed. Uh, thanks for watching, and um, leave a comment down below. If you've seen this problem way before I did and forgot about it, that's pretty cool if you did catch that. Um, leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching. We'll come back to this in the future. Part number two, coming.